Hey everyone, Coaching Station here. In this video, we will go over one of many ways to use Shader Graph with Dots based system. This is a regular Boyd simulation but with quads flapping their wings. The frequency of the flapping is proportional to the Boyd's current velocity and the glow is more intense if they are concentrated. Both of these behaviors are controlled by Dots based system that is continuously modifying the exposed Shader Graph properties. The shader has three exposed variables, out of which two are exposed in a way that they can be addressed via dots based system. The Boyd's color is just going to provide a color value. Frequency is going to control flapping frequency and the emission is specifying how intense the glow would be. The shader uses a position node set to object space and isolates X component after splitting the output. Getting an absolute value will give us the mask we need, which is to select the vertices along the X axis. We now multiply the time node with the exposed frequency variable and feed it to the sine node. We multiply this with mask and add the y component of position node. We can combine x, y and z components of the position and feed it to our vertex position. If we now change the default value, we can see our quad flapping as intended. We also multiply another exposed variable, the emission intensity with a color and feed it to emission. Changing the emission intensity would intensify the glow. In order to expose these variables, we will have to override property declaration and the shader declaration must be set to hybrid per instance. To highlight this glow, we would of course need a post-processing volume with bloom effect. The reference must also be uniquely identifiable so we can specify the mapping in a dedicated component data structure. We will now need two structs to specify the mapping between exposed shader graph property and the value to specify, along with case sensitive material property reference and its type. I initially thought it would be referenced by default as our voids have this shader assigned, but turns out we will have to explicitly add them to entities while spawning. Also, the default values is not the value of the material we create using the shader. Instead, it is the default value we specify when we expose these properties in shader graph. We will now declare a new property to determine how many voids are in a given voxel. Though this information would be repeated in every void in a cell, this was the easiest way to do. We can populate this value by pushing the total number of voids we use to calculate the forces for a given void. Ideally, I would query the voxels with at least one void and simply count the number of entities of a given type in it. It is still the efficient way though, so we will leave it at that. With entity spawn phi, quite a bit has changed. The iSystem base is now called iSystem, but the core implementation remains the same. As I mentioned in some of my previous videos, I really like this way of writing ECS code where possible as it seems somehow more intuitive. We will create entity query and query for entities of our interest by specifying i component data type we added to our voids. We will need the read-only version of voids component data as we need the total number of voids in a given cell and the velocity of every void. We will also need the newly created void frequency and emission component data types. We will then pass this to our shader job that iterates over every chunk. The intensity can be calculated by linear interpolation. Basically, we are just mapping the max number of voids in a cell between 0.4 to 1. 0.4 because we don't want our voids to be fully dark when they are alone and 1 being the highest emission. We will also calculate the flap frequency based on the velocity of these individual voids because we can. We can now hit play and find ourselves lost in the simulation. If we set the right values to our bloom post processing volume, the glow can be nicely intensified. I know I have done a lot of videos on void space simulation, but this was just an example. This way of addressing exposed shader graph variables and controlling the shader graph behavior via efficient dots based system opens up a lot of possibilities in my opinion. This is all I have for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have fun.